going to finish up this unit with a summary of how to use coverage to help us build better software. We're going to have to start off doing a good job testing, and there's no way around that. The next step is to measure the coverage of the tests, using some coverage metric that's appropriate for the software that you're testing. If the coverage was pretty high, let's say 80 or 90 percent, then what we should do is use the feedback from the coverage tool, use feedback to improve our test suite, and then measure coverage again. And if the coverage results were poor, that is to say maybe we only covered 20 percent of the statements in our code base, that's a signal that we need to rethink our testing strategy. And of course, it could be the case that we're perfectly happy with poor coverage. There are plenty of scenarios in, for example, web application development. We don't need good coverage because our users are going to test the code for us, and if it breaks, we'll detect it by looking at error logs, and we'll be able to fix it on the fly. On the other hand, if we had poor coverage results for some sort of avionics software or automotive software that's going to be deployed and it's extremely hard to update, we probably would need to rethink our plan in a really serious way and try to come up with a much better test suite in order to get a higher level of coverage. If coverage is used in the fashion that I've outlined here, it can give us a pretty significant amount of bang for the buck. Regardless of the result, regardless of whether it's giving us a little bit of feedback to get the last 5 or 10% of improvement in coverage, or whether it's telling us that our testing strategy really isn't very good, it's telling us useful information. It's telling us useful information that we probably need to know if we're going to create high quality software. And finally, I just want to finish up with a reminder. So we strongly believe that if we have a good test suite and we measure its coverage, the coverage will be good. We do not believe, on the other hand, that if we have a test suite that gets good coverage, it must be a good test suite. And the reason that that's not true is that it's really easy to take a test suite and tweak it until it gets really good coverage without actually improving the quality of it very much. To finish up, used in the right way, coverage can be a relatively low cost way to improve the testing that we do for a piece of software. Used incorrectly, it can waste our time, and perhaps worse, lead to a false sense of security.